Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena video. Today we're taking a look at the Jungle Secret starter deck. We'll uh, take a look at the deck, we'll make some upgrades to the deck, and then we'll play both the game before and after making changes to the deck to see how it performs. So let's dive right into it here. So the Jungle Secrets deck is an aggressive Merfolk deck, so it's one of the better starter decks you can start out with in my opinion, since it's not too far away from being a completed deck. So we won't need to make too many upgrades to the deck, so if you're low on the wild cards, this might be a deck for you. So first off, taking a look at the deck, uh, the key cards in the deck in my opinion are the Merfolk Mistbinder and Silver Gill Adept, so those will be the first cards we want to upgrade. So I'll try and kind of go in order of which cards I would upgrade first. So we can add one of each. Then next up, another important card that's not included in the deck to start with is the Evasive One-Drop Merfolk Miscloaked Herald. So we can uh, add a couple of those. This will give the deck more evasion built in, so we don't need to rely on our finisher effects to kind of push through damage. Then another card I kind of like is the River Sneak, adding to the evasive build of the deck. Then in the meantime we would also be cutting some cards out of the deck, so the Disperses, while nice interaction can go, especially once we add Merfolk Trickster to the deck, as we'll do in a second. Uh, Deep Root Champion, while it is a rare, so it might seem powerful, is actually not the most synergistic Merfolk since we're not playing a lot of non-creature spells in the deck, so that one can easily go as well. Deep Root Elite is also one of the more powerful cards that we want to upgrade as soon as possible, so I want to add more copies to the deck, but we'll get to that in a second. River Herald's Boon is a fine card, so it can stay in the deck for as long as you want to, but is also a card that I'm eventually going to be cutting in the final build of the deck. Uh, Jade Light Ranger, very powerful card as well, but uh, doesn't actually fit too well into the final deck I have in mind for the Merfolk deck, since we're not too interested in drawing a lot of lands in the late game, since we're trying to be a low-curve aggressive deck that can operate fine with two or three lands in play. So that's also a card I don't mind cutting. And Water Trap Weaver, while it does offer some interaction, is not the most uh, aggressively costed card in the deck, so that's also a card I don't mind cutting. Cards like Sleep and Tempest Color go down in value as we add more evasive creatures like Miscloaked Herald and River Sneak. At this point we can try cutting some of our Tempest Color and Sleep effects to make room for additional copies of Deep Root Elite. Which is also an important piece of the puzzle here. And as we add more Lord Effects with Deep Root Elite and Merfolk Mistbinder, having more cheap Merfolk in your deck just becomes better. So having multiple copies of Miscloaked Herald, Jade Bearer, Kumena Speaker is gonna make uh, the rest of the deck function a lot better. So those are also cards I don't mind maxing out. So we've got a very aggressive 12 one drops in the deck, then taking a look at the rest of the deck we can now cut some of the River Hell's boons, especially now that we have maxed out the Deep Root Elites which also provide plus one plus one counters. Then another card that I definitely like is Kumena, since that's one of the powerful finishers in the deck that can also provide a lot of card advantage, so I definitely don't mind adding an additional copy, can even go up to three. Definitely not a card that's necessary to go up to 4 copies since it is a legendary creature, so there's some diminishing returns there, but definitely a powerful card. And then uh, Kumena and our Deep Root Elite also synergize nicely with Jungleborn Pioneer, so that's also a card I like adding a few more copies of. And then Herald of Secret Streams I don't find necessary, especially with the additions of River Sneak and Miscloaked Herald, we already have enough built-in evasion that the ability is not that relevant anymore. And Seafloor Oracle I do like, since it works very nicely with River Sneak and our Miscloaked Herald, since we'll have that built-in evasion. So the turn that we play Seafloor Oracle, we can start drawing cards right away. And I don't mind a second copy as another curve topper. 
And then the starter build of the deck starts out with 25 lands, which we don't really need since now we've lowered the curve of the deck significantly, added a lot more 1-drops. So I think in the final build of the deck you want somewhere around 22 lands. But by um, cutting some lands we will make the mana base a little less consistent, which is why we need the addition of Unclaimed Territory. And especially now that we're almost only playing uh, Merfolk and we're not playing any instants and sorceries, Unclaimed Territory is just an excellent addition to the deck, which will help us cast both our green and blue Merfolk on turn 1 and forward. And finally, the last upgrade to the deck is adding additional copies of Hinterland Harbor. So we'll go up to 4 copies here as well. So we can get these Woodland Streams out of the deck. And then leave us with 7 Islands. Seven forests for Hinterland Harbor for Unclaimed Territory, which is 22 lands, which is more or less where we want to be. And then another card I don't mind adding to the deck is our uh, Merfolk Trickster to add a little bit more interaction to the deck. So we can cut the River Herald's Boons and add one or two Merfolk Tricksters. We could cut a Jade Bear for it, we could cut the third Kumena if you don't have enough Mythic Wild cards. Um, those are the main cards I would be looking at to cut. So that leaves us with 60 cards, so we've added Miscloaked Heralds, we've added additional copies of Jade Bear and Kumena Speaker to make the deck a little bit more aggressive. Merfolk Tricksters are only real interaction that we have in a deck, but since we have so many unblockable Merfolk between Kumena, Miscloaked Herald and River Sneak, we don't need all that much interaction since we're very good at adding power and toughness to the board with all our Mistbinders and Deep Root Elites. Then Silver Gill Adept is kind of a must-have, since that's what makes a deck function. We've got Deep Root Elite to add a lot of power and toughness, as well as the Mistbinder. Pioneer adds multiple Merfolk to the board, which is nice with Deep Root Elite, and adding bodies for Kumena is always nice, and of course adds a lot of power and toughness if we have a lot of Merfolk Mistbinders in play. And then Kumena and Seafloor Oracle are kind of our card draw engines that can consistently draw us additional cards if the board ever stalls out. And then our mana base, we've got 7 islands, 7 forests, 4 hinterland harbors, and 4 unclaimed territories for a bit of a better mana base. And then if we were to add a sideboard to the deck, the main card I would look at is Negate, to help us against sweeper effects out of control decks, for example. So we can easily have 4 negates in the sideboard. We could even add some spell pierces on top of that if we want to. It's definitely reasonable too. So one or two spell pierces. Then another card I'm a fan of that I didn't have room for in the main deck, but is definitely a powerful engine card, is our enchantment, which makes uh, Merfolk, which is Deep Root Waters. So whenever we cast a Merfolk, we get to make a 1-1 Merfolk with Hexproof, which does work out quite well, especially with synergies with Kumena, for example. Uh, I just didn't have room for it in the main deck, but you could consider it if you're a fan of the card. But it's definitely powerful sideboard cards against control strategies. When uh, they rely on their sweeper effects to keep the board clean, you can just keep making more Merfolk with Deep Root Waters, and you don't have to overextend into a sweeper effect as badly. And another card that could be interesting to bring in against certain decks is Hadana's Climb. As kind of a transformational plan, you could add a copy or two of Hadana's Climb and just go all in on one Merfolk especially. If you also bring in the Deep Root Waters, you can have a Hexproof Merfolk that you can target, put a whole bunch of plus one plus one counters on it, and the opponent will have a hard time interacting with that. And you could also add some Disenchants if you're struggling to beat some artifacts or enchantments. So something like a Naturalize will do just fine, so you can add a couple of those to the deck as well. And then we're pretty close to having a completed deck list here. You could always add some more copies of Tempest Caller in the sideboard if there's uh, matchups where the opponent makes a whole bunch of blockers that you're having trouble getting past. So adding a Tempest Caller for, for example, the Tokens matchups or the Mono Green matchups where they put up a lot of blockers, Tempest Caller can come in handy. So that's also a card that makes for a fine sideboard card. And then another sideboard card you could consider is Kopala, Warden of Waves, against spot removal heavy decks to protect your Merfolk from removal. So I think in the final sideboard I would have one Kopala, two Hadana's Climbs, and then what you see here. Alright, let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. 
All right, so we're playing a game with Jungle Secrets version 1. The sound seems totally fine. Double Kumena speaker to start off with. River Herald's Boon synergizes nicely with our Herald of Secret Streams. So we've got a nice opener here. Up against the red deck. Let's play our island, attack for two. Keep up the boon in case they try to shock our Komena speaker here. And after damage we'll play the second copy. Alright, opponent's considering doing something here. So if they do pull the trigger on a removal spell, we can boon to save our creature. Alright, opponent decides not to. But we will add another speaker to the board. And uh, Water Trap Weaver also looking pretty decent here. Alright, so we can tap down the Pyromancer. And get in for four. Alright, key to Lava Runner. Just a 1-2 for now. Alright, then we picked up a Jade Bear, which is also pretty sweet here. So let's play a Jade Bear first. Which will attempt to target one of our Merfolk. We have the Boon in case of a removal spell. Doesn't really matter which one we target here. Let's target the Weaver. See if our opponent has a response. Alright, opponent's got a Sheevan Fire, so in response to the Sheevan Fire, we can put an additional counter on the Weaver, one on the Speaker. So Weaver will survive the Sheevan Fire and then still get a Jade Bearer counter. Let's see if it have another one mana removal spell. Alright, that's too bad. Shock takes out our Kumena Speaker, but uh, our Water Trap Weaver does survive. Now I won't be attacking with it since otherwise it would just trade for the Lava Runner but I will get in with the Kumena Speaker. So opponent having two cheap removal spells there was definitely a setback, but Herald of Secret Streams will make it so the Water Trap Weaver goes unblocked, and the 4-4 Merfolk is difficult for the red deck to take out, but it looks like our opponent's also playing blue. So we definitely have a game. If they didn't have another one mana removal spell here, the game probably would have gone in our favor but uh, now we're definitely pretty even. Another Lava Runner and an aggressive attack. Alright, Pyromancer stays back. I'm definitely fine taking two, don't want to risk blocking with the Weaver and their opponent having a combo trick. Ooh, Seafloor Oracle's not bad. I think I like that over the Herald. And attack with both. Might see a defensive combat trick here as well. But then we'll still get to draw with the Jade Bear. And it's going to be a shock. So we still get to take out a Pyromancer, which is nice. And we get to draw a card with Jade Bear to get some more cards flowing. We did lose all our plus one plus one counters, so the Herald of Secret Streams not looking too hot. But opponent also down to one card. And they'll have to play defense and Water Trap Weaver. It's uh, quite a draw here. Alright, and we were expecting to draw some additional lands by now. Since we are playing 25, which is quite a lot. So we were lucky not to draw any more lands before then. And that's also one of the benefits of having fewer lands in the deck and a lower curve is that you don't run into that problem as much. And now we're just going off with our Seafloor Oracle. It's going to make it difficult for the opponent to come back. Get to play Silvergill, revealing Herald. And we'll play the Herald, I guess to be more mana efficient, and the next turn sleep should be lethal. Double cast, alright. Do they have some sort of sweeper effect? Or just a removal spell? 
All right, lightning strike. So opponent can take out our two rares here, but sleep is still gonna kill them. All right, so it was a hard-fought battle, but in the end, the card draw from our seafloor oracle was a bit too much to handle. All right, sweet. And this hand's looking fine. Uh, turn one Jade Bearer is a little awkward, so we might keep it until later. So we don't have the luxury of starting off with a one drop. But uh, still a decent hand. So we definitely got lucky in the previous match with version 1 to start off with double Kumena Speaker, since that's one of the ideal one drops for the deck. And we only had three of those in the deck, so drawing two of them isn't going to happen every time. Alright, so now we have a decision, quite a few decisions actually, on which to drop to lead with. I'm tempted to lead with the Deep Root Elite here to accumulate more plus one plus one counters, and then next turn we can maybe deploy the River Sneak to start going on the beatdown plan with an unblockable creature. Up against turn one Lanor Elves, which is always scary. But the green deck's not going to have a ton of removal. Here we're seeing the upside of Unclaimed Territory, functioning as an untapped land, making both colors of mana, with no real downside. So we could go River Sneak and then Jade Bear put a counter on River Sneak. Although then we're emptying out our hand of Merfolk, so the Silver Guild Adept will no longer be a two mana play. I think I'm okay deploying the River Sneak here. Could also put a counter on the Deep Root Elite itself, but I usually prefer to put it on the River Sneak if we can. So I think I'm just going to pass a turn here. Kind of hedging our bets in case we don't draw Merfolk. And there's a Goreclaw. Alright, so as it turns out we drew another Jade Bear, but that's still fine. Which means we can go Silver Gill and then double Jade Bear. And go all in on the River Sneak. So let's put a counter on River Sneak. Draw land, so we're definitely drawing a decent amount of lands here for only playing 22 of them. So we're just gonna make a giant unblockable river sneak and hope the opponent can deal with it. Alright, that's 10 unblockable coming in. And Carnage Tyrants, that's a big blocker, but doesn't stop our River Sneak. So whereas in the original build of the deck you have cards like Sleep and Tempest Caller, given that we have more unblockable creatures built in, we uh, don't have to rely on those as much. So we drew a fair share of lands, definitely more than in the previous build, despite having three fewer lands in the deck. So we definitely ran below average, I would say. But that uh, looks like we still have a good chance here. Opponent might have a fight effect to take out the River Sneak. Instead of just a Bristling Boar for now. And another one. So if their last card is not a Prey Upon or a Rabbit Bite, the River Sneak's gonna be lethal. Could try and take out the Goreclaw if we wanted to. I guess your opponent could still have a Prey Upon in the second main phase after attacking with the Carnage Tyrant. But we couldn't take it out here. Alright, no Prey Upon, and there's Merfolk Mistbinder right on time. Let's bump the River Sneak one more. And attack for 10 Unblockable once again. Alright, sweet. Let's play some more games with version 2 here to get a better feel for it. All right, we're on the draw, and this hand's looking pretty decent. Unclaimed territory is going to be a big part of how good this hand is going to be, as we draw another land. All right, let's lead with our Miscloaked Herald. Next turn we can play River Sneak, 
get that unblockable damage going. And yep, opponent does have the Curious Obsession, which is a definitely a problematic card for us since we're so low on interaction and the opponent's going to be able to generate a lot of extra cards with it. So our game plan this game is going to be to try and get as much power and toughness to the board um, before our opponent can kind of take advantage of all the extra cards they drew. We found another Miscloaked Herald, which does make this more interesting. I think we still are in the camp of playing a River Sneak here. And then we can take advantage of the cheap Merfolk next turn to pump it up. And if our opponent is keeping up cards like Spell Pierce, then they're going to be pretty disappointed since we don't have any non-creature spells in the main deck. So both decks with a lot of unblockable creatures. Siren Storm Tamer. Alright, so far so good. Opponent's not adding too many additional creatures to the board, which is good. And a Deep Root Elite. Opponent does have two mana up, so they could easily have a Wizard's Retort. Siren Storm Tamer is a wizard. So we don't want to go running our expensive, powerful Merfolk into it. But on the other hand, do we really have a choice? There's a lot of approaches you could take here. I think we want to avoid getting our two drops countered. So I'm going to lead with the Jade Bear. See if they're interested in countering this one. If they do, then sure, we get to follow up with one of our two drops. If they don't, then that's fine too. And I think we'll diversify and put our counter on the Herald, as opposed to the River Sneak, in case they do have some way of bouncing or tapping our creatures. And then I think I'm fine playing the Miscloaked Herald. See if they want to counter this one. They don't. All right. Pump our River Sneak some more. Go to combat and see if they have any effects. All right, they did have a Merfolk Trickster to tap down our River Sneak. But we can still get in for two. All right. Next turn we can double two drop, which is nice. But if the opponent's sitting on a bunch of uh, counter spells, we could be in trouble. All right, they're going to tap out for a Tempest Gin, which doesn't kill us next turn unless they can add some more enchantments to the board. And now we get to leverage our Merfolk Synergies. So let's get our Deep Root Elite out there. And then our Merfolk Mistbinder. We'll put a counter on the smaller Herald here again to diversify. And get in for a big chunk of unblockable damage. And then our hope is that we can survive next turn and then finish them off. Opponent's got the island, so they're attacking for 10 damage potentially, but we can block the trickster. Alright, so they're just getting in for 7. If our opponent has multiple copies of Merfolk Trickster, we could be in trouble. It's going to be a charter course to draw to, look for an answer. Merfolk Trickster targeting the Mistbinder also makes it so we lose the bonus. Ooh, Kumina Tyrant of Oraska is not bad, as that's another Merfolk for the Deep Root Elite. Opponent lets it resolve. All right, so let's think about this. If our opponent has a Merfolk Trickster, we're dead regardless. So we might as well uh, pump the Miscloaked Herald here. And we might as well draw with Kumena here, since we're not attacking with our ground creatures. On the off chance that we draw into another relevant Merfolk. Probably should have tapped our mana a little bit better in case we could draw into a Merfolk Trickster of our own. Alright, so we're going to attack. And hope they don't have a Merfolk Trickster here. But it looks like they might. Alright, let me briefly pause the video here, as I've noticed a mistake when editing the video. So what we were trying to do is draw into another Merfolk, since that would be lethal even through a Merfolk Trickster. 
but instead we could have had guaranteed lethal through Murfolk Trickster if we just move to the beginning of combat step. If our opponent does happen to have a Murfolk Trickster tapping down our 4-4 miscloaked herald, we could have responded by tapping 5 untapped Murfolk we control with Kumena's ability, including the targeted miscloaked herald, which would then put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on each Murfolk we control, and then the remaining unblockable creatures would have been lethal. So we messed this up here by trying to draw a card in the hopes of finding a Murfolk when we could have had guaranteed lethal. And we're going to be one damage short here. Yep. Alright, it's too bad. So we were one Murfolk short here. If we drew into a cheap Murfolk, we would have won the game. And that was with our opponent starting with uh, Herald into Curious Obsession, which is one of their better starts. So still a decent performance here. Right, GG's. Very close game. This is also a situation where being on the play versus being on the draw can make all the difference. Alright, we're on the draw with a one lander. If the one lander was an unclaimed territory, I would be more tempted to keep. Uh, but having single blue here, I don't think is going to cut it. Alright, this one's a little sketchy too, but at least we can play Herald and hopefully the Scry finds us green mana. Alright, perfect. So we might still have a chance here. Turn one planes. Turn one miscloaked Herald. And then next turn we can play the Deep Root Elite, which is going to be quite powerful. We also have the synergy between Seafloor Oracle and Miscloaked Herald. Triple Plane Start into Hisro Banalia. All right. Merfolk Trickster is not bad. Could even tap down a Knight token. I guess going Speaker plus Trickster gives us additional counters with the Deep Root Elite this turn, which might be worth it. And um, if we play Kumena this turn, we're not tapping three creatures to draw a card yet. So if we can wait until next turn, where we can maybe tap down everything except for the Herald to draw a card, that's going to work out better. It's definitely close, but I don't mind this. And just go all in on the Herald. And we can also sneak in a point with our Deep Root Elite, now that the token's tapped down. There's also the argument for keeping Trickster until the third chapter of history to prevent more damage. And Leonin Warleader, definitely an issue. And an attack from the Knight. I think we take it. Ooh, that's a nice one. Murfolk Mistbinder. Alright, so what we could also consider now is playing Kumena and just turtle up and threaten the tap 5 Murfolk to put plus 1 plus 1 counters everywhere, and that's going to make it difficult for the opponent to make any great attacks. Don't hate it. Just play defense for a turn. And where to put the counter? We could just put it on Kumena. So it would be a 4-6 when it blocks, which lines up pretty well. Seems fine. Just hope they don't have a removal spell for it. Alright, they tapped Forsaken Sanctuary. Opponent goes to combat and does not attack, so Kumena successfully held off the attack and now we can put some counters everywhere. Which seems better than drawing one card. And now we get to Seafloor Oracle. The Miscloaked Herald could get in there. We could also tap a Merfolk to make Kumena unblockable, get in for 8 unblockable damage, which is a 2-turn clock. That seems pretty decent. Do have to watch out for something like a Selder Wreckage here. So that could be a reason to attack with just a 1 unblockable creature. Could also just draw 2 cards with Kumena, so we've got a ton of options all of a sudden. 
How likely is the opponent to play Saladar Vekage in their deck? Not very likely, but it's not impossible. They did do nothing with 4 mana up, which is a little suspicious. I think I'll put the counter on the Herald and then just attack with the Herald for now. Which leaves us the option of putting counters everywhere with our creatures. But still deals a bit of damage and draws us a card with Oracle. Another Kumena is a nice replacement. And while we could have tapped 5 Merfolk to put a counter on the Herald, I think keeping our creatures back on defense and then threatening to put a counter everywhere is probably more valuable. Call to the Feast to make some lifelinking blockers, sure. But we are just threatening lethal with our two unblockable creatures here. And the Merfolk Mistbinder is going to be a nice addition too. Alright. Play a Mistbinder. We'll target Kumena. Kumena can become unblockable. And we've got 14 unblockable damage coming through. Alright, sweet. So this game got to show off some of the upgrades of the deck. The low land count keeping us high on threats. The Kumena drawing us extra cards and putting counters everywhere. And then the combination of Mistbinder and Deep Root Elite to pump the team consistently. And then the evasive threats making it so that we can easily win through a board stall. Alright, let me know in the comments which deck you would like to see upgraded next. But for now, I want to thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel. And you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.